The church has started using these three words, discover, gather, connect, to describe many of the activities that we participate in pertaining to family history work. I'd like to describe some of my thoughts concerning these three words as they relate specifically to us bringing ancestors to the temple. When you think of the first phase that we'll go through in trying to uh, get an ancestor to take to the temple, we need to discover somebody who needs ordinances. And the easiest way to do that is with the new feature that the church has provided called Ordinances Ready. Ordinances Ready is a delightful process where you are guaranteed to find somebody that you can take to the temple. Uh, you'll be able to print a card and quickly uh, bring them to the temple. How it works is when you're signed on to Family Search, you go to your temple tab, and at the bottom is this Ordinances Ready uh, tab, and so you'll click that, and up will pop these different selections. And so if I'm wanting to go do baptisms, I would click Baptisms, Initiatory Endowment, Sealing to Parents or Sealing to Spouse. Once I click it, it goes and finds me four different uh, possibilities that I could take to the temple. So there they are, and it tells me one of them is from my own reservation list, and the other three are from uh, people that have been shared by my ancestors with the temple. And so when I click View People, you see the one that I already have reserved, and then you uh, see the three others that, the, that have been shared with the temple that I can now bring back from the temple and do myself. If I wanted to just do one of these, I could click and then uh, take that one. Once I take it to the temple, it'll allow me then to go ahead and print and uh, I, I can print the card. So Ordinances Ready is a really easy way to find people and take them quickly to the temple. It is a little bit restrictive. I have found that um, I wish that I could control where it goes in the tree and that I can know who it is that I'm, uh, that I'm looking at. Uh, I know that you can check your relationship to them after it finds it, but I kind of like to have the control. I also uh, am a little bit frustrated when it only allows me to take the baptism, the confirmation, and then the other ordinances stay with the temple. Once I get attached to somebody, I want to take them and do all of their ordinances for them, and sometimes that becomes unwieldy or difficult to, uh, to, to gather all of those ordinances when they've been shared with the temple. So there's still these other ways to find people in your tree that are um, needing ordinances. The Descendancy View, Hope Chest, and Pazilla. Ordinances Ready takes about 30 seconds to learn how to use. These three methods, Descendancy View, Hope Chest, and Pazilla, take about 30 minutes to learn how to use. So they're more co complicated, but they are more controllable. You control where you work on your tree, and you also control the ordinances that you discover uh, better or e more easily than you do in Ordinances Ready. After you've discovered somebody, whether you use Ordinances Ready or another method, then we want to start to gather information about them. So rather than automatically printing their cards as they are, we want to go and see if we can find sources that are tied to our ancestor. We want to see if there are missing dates or places that those sources can provide for us. We want to see if there's missing family members, a spouse, a child, parents, siblings, and we want to make sure that there aren't any duplicates that are um, continuing to uh, be an issue. One thing you'll find is as you add sources and dates and places, duplicates are found that weren't found initially. So you want to um, add this information and check one last time for duplicates. So when I show you this lady, Ruth Brixley, uh, the way that initially I could have taken her to the temple, she was ready to go and I could have requested her, it would have Ruth and only um, 1893 in Tennessee and no death date. But with the record hints that are already waiting for me there, I found that her real name is Alta Ruth Brixley. And then I was able to find a, a more accurate birth date and a death date as well. And that took no time at all because I had record hints waiting for me. So that's one of the things we want to do is see if we can correct and complete the information. The other thing we would do is scroll farther down and check the family members and see if there's anybody missing. For Ruth, there was no spouse, and so I needed to check that out. Once I've gathered information, then what I want to do 
is try to connect that information to my ancestor. So I'm going to attach those sources to my ancestor. I'm going to go in and add the dates and the places to my ancestor. I'm going to um, add missing family members. And then finally, and most importantly, I'm going to connect the ancestor that I found to the ordinances of the gospel. The process that um, I went through with Ruth allowed me to be able to add seven sources I was able to get an exact birth date and, an exact, and a pretty exact death date with a death place. And so that was important. As I came down, I never did find a spouse for her. And I found myself a little bit tender toward her when I realized that one of these seven sources was the 1940 census. And when I saw that Ruth was still single at the age of 47 and she was living with her sister, Annie D., and their son, um, that made me... Um, come to know Ruth a little bit better. Uh, you know, I don't know the conditions that led to her never getting married, but I was at least confident that she wasn't married, and so I didn't feel too badly taking um, her to the temple without finding that spouse. You can see that if you don't spend a little bit of time trying to correct this information, and you run and do the ordinances as quickly as possible, you'll remove that green temple so the computer won't go and find Ruth again and um, have other people go on her person page. And if she did have a spouse, uh, no one would bother to look at her because um, she no longer has that neon light of a green temple to lead them there. So I always will suggest that once you find somebody or discover somebody, that you then gather information about them, sources and information, and family members, and then connect all of that together and then connect them to the ordinances of the gospel.